My guests today are Chris and Gabrielle with Texas Jail Project, and we're here today to talk about county jails in Texas. So what did the COVID-19 pandemic show us about uh, county jails? I think what we discovered through the pandemic, which was not unexpected at all, is how unprepared our county jails were to deal with a public health um, mm. epidemic of, of those proportions. Mm -hmm. Even before the pandemic, we uh, we had seen the county jails uh, usurping the function of public health institutions, people that we would expect to normally see in an emergency room or a mental health institution were ending up in county jails. Um, so it was already a huge problem. What was really reinforced was that policies around and inside county jails um, were more punitive than preventative. And that's not just for the pandemic itself as a mm -hmm. viral infection, um, but, but it's our approach to crime, uh, punishment, not prevention. What do we see as far as uh, compassionate release or early release? Do we see that happen in Texas much? There were inspiring efforts at the beginning of the pandemic in counties across the state uh, to mobilize uh, local sheriffs and criminal justice systems uh, to facilitate mass releases, but those were quickly thwarted by Governor Abbott's executive order G-13, mm -hmm. uh, which introduced a lot of confusion for judges, magistrates, and attorneys as to who was eligible for release or not. Um, so in some of the biggest jails in the state, uh, like Tarrant County Jail, Dallas County Jail, Harris County Jail, um, numbers have remained uh, fairly stagnant. How does mental health play into uh, county jailing practices? I think it's one of the most criminalized issues that we see in our state today. It still shocks us that in a state this size, with the kind of resources that we have, the largest confiner of people with mental illness is a county jail, not a hospital, not a mental health institution. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives you a, a sort of sense of how much we've criminalized mental illnesses. It's so heartbreaking when a family is asking for resources from the state and they're told in order to access them, your child should go to jail. And then once they're in jail, they're receiving the, the lowest level of correctional medicine uh, possible. Um, so it, you can't talk about one without the other when it comes to criminal punishment and, and mental health in the state. Uh, let's talk about this 2020 uh, Tarrant County report card. Uh, what stood out in your uh, research? One of the biggest things that surprised us in doing the research for the report card um, was the cost that the county was spending on confinement um, and confinement alone. So not even including the courts or the police or pretrial services, but only on the facility itself uh, for the jailers, those salaries. Um, the county was going to spend $109 million on confinement alone. And when you compare that with only $10 million budgeted for community services, um, it's really no wonder <laughs> why spikes in incarceration are not leading to improved outcomes for public safety. Um, Tarrant County Jail is also an extremely deadly facility. Uh, there are 17 jail custody deaths in Car Tarrant County Jail in 2020. Um, that's four times the number of people the entire state of Texas sentenced to death in the previous year. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think people kind of anecdotally uh, associate Texas with as the death penalty capital of the country. Um, but on a far grander scale, we are letting many more people die in county jails without having ever been convicted of their crime mm -hmm. um, because of how dangerous and unsafe these facilities are. What, what kind of reforms would you, would you like to see ideally happen? Instead of expanding pretrial detention, which is what the bail bills are uh, mm -hmm. seeming to do, uh, which will you know, in turn disproportionately impact people with disabilities and mental illnesses, we would have loved to see some real acknowledgement of the fact that our jails have become these confiners and warehouses of people with mental illness and how we can address um, uh, the meaningful diversion in the mm -hmm. community. Well, it's a lot of great information. Uh, we encourage folks to uh, visit texasjailproject.org. You guys have a lot of great information and articles on your website. Uh, you're a nonprofit, so we, if people uh, care about this, we encourage them to uh, make a donation and, and find ways to uh, support your work as well. Uh, so Christian, Gabriella, uh, did you have any, any final thoughts to share with our viewers? Um, Edward, I would like to add a new site. If okay. you mentioned our website, we just okay. launched um, a digital archive. Uh, it was kind of like our bearing witness of this COVID-19 pandemic in County Jails project. Um, it's called Shedding Light. Uh, I can uh, post the link in the chat if you wouldn't mind okay. sharing that with your viewers. We'll include that. And actually, we have collected, um, the archive has um, 
phone calls from jails, letters, mm. um, grievances, people writing their own pros emotions and uh, medical complaints, poetry, essays, art, like all kinds of uh, okay. artifacts that we've collected since the beginning of the pandemic wow. uh, from all across the state in, from the county jails. Okay, we'll definitely mention that. All right. Well, thank you both for your time and good luck with your work. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep.